so as we are clear about what is stress and strain so coming back to it stress is denoted by sigma uh, and it is uh, written as force upon per uh, unit area and the unit is newton per meter square which is also written as pascal or newton per mm square depending upon the cross sections dimensions uh, the units of the cross sectional dimensions so these are normal stresses if the forces are applied normal to the body they come under the category of normal stresses if the forces are applied tangential to the body they come under the category of tangential stresses the definition of stress uh, lies that it is the internal resistance offered by a body due to an applied load whereas pressure is the external resistance offered by a body due to an applied load so if you talk about internal resistance stress becomes an molecular phenomena whereas uh, pressure becomes a surface phenomena so uh, again strain strain is denoted by epsilon and this is uh, strain and this is stress strain is given by delta l by l or you can say it is change in length by original length so uh, there is a hooke's law governing uh, this stress and strain relationship so hooke's law states that under elastic limits under elastic limits stress is directly proportional to strain under elastic limits so this statement under elastic limits has to be written because stress is not directly proportional to strain under every condition under elastic limits only stress is directly proportional to strain so or this can be now written as stress is equal to e into strain where e is called your constant of proportionality or it is called as young's modulus and somewhere it is also called as elastic modulus so here stress is directly proportional to strain so we have introduced this constant of proportionality and said this as stress is directly is equal to e into strain now if you use this stress was given by force upon area strain is given as strain is given as change in length by l so you can write p by a is equal to e into delta l by l so delta l is equal to p l by a e now this is this equation is the most important governing equation in strength of materials you have number of relationships which have been derived starting from here so delta l is equal to p l by a e where p is applied load or force length is l is length of member a is cross sectional area so the definition of cross sectional area i have already told you that it is the area of the plane perpendicular to the direction of loading and e is young's modulus okay so this is uh, the statement or this is the formula to find out the total change in length so next what we have is uh, the stress strain diagrams so we have stress strain diagrams for uh, ductile and battery material so ductile material is a material which uh, can be drawn into wires so if you
look at the stress strain diagram for a ductile material this is stress and this is strain so this is somehow the this is a this is b this is c this is d this is e and this is f so if you look at the salient points a is your proportional limit A is a proportional limit. B is your elastic limit. C is your upper yield point. D is your lower yield point. E is your maximum. then side strength and f is your fracture point so these stress strain diagrams are not drawn manually they are done with the help of a machine that is called as a utm this is called as universal testing machine now the working and demonstration of this machine is a part of your practical syllabus probably in your material science uh, uh, examinations or practicals it has been already been discussed so how to operate the utm that if you don't know i'll be taking up later but right now let us come to the salient points if you look at this stress strain curve you can very well see that there are no values associated with it so this is a stress strain diagram for a ductile material irrespective of what what it is you have num number of uh, varieties of ductile material starting from steel uh, copper aluminium gold silver you have number of materials which are uh, ductile in nature so the common nature of the curve has been represented like this so depending upon the material there are slight changes in the curve also which are demonstrated from material to material if you look at a and b a is called as your proportional limit because it is said that uh, stress is directly proportional to strain under these constants b is a point and after which it is seen that there is uh, no relationship between stress and strain you do not have any relationship beyond b which describes the relationship or which describes the mathematical relation between stress and strain so a and b may superimpose they may have difference uh, difference of distance between them the reason is very simple it depends upon the ductility of the material like you say the same material the same diagram can be there for a steel uh, uh, as well as for gold a gold is far more ductile than steel so the difference between a and b is actually a representation of the ductility of the material greater the difference greater is will be the ductility of the material so if you have two diagrams where there is distances between a and b the one which has a lesser distance between a and b is said to be lesser ductile as compared to the previous one it is not that it is not ductile it is ductile but the amount of ductility depends is a representation of a to the distance between a to b so for greater ductile materials this distance is more for less lesser ductile materials the distance is less but the hooke's law is valid both on point a and point b 
in some cases even point a is not represented we directly start with point b now c is called as your upper yield point c is called as your upper yield point because yielding is a phenomena where you have a increase in strain with a decrease in stress means the stress decreases and the strain increases this process or this phenomena is called as yielding now this happens because you have permanent deformation introduced into the material so if you talk about deformation deformations are of two types temporary and permanent or they are also called as elastic and inelastic deformations or they are also called as elastic and plastic deformations so elastic deformation is a type of deformation which is completely recoverable after removal of load whereas plastic deformation is a deformation which is not completely recoverable after the removal of load so plastic deformation you can see up you can take a polythene aap usse extend karo bad jayega uske baad chhod do it does not regain its original shape and size whereas if you have a rubber band you increase its size and upon removal of load it once again comes back to its original shape and size so this is what differentiates between elastic and plastic deformation so if you look at between c and d what generally happens is let us say you have a 1 meter long iron member or a steel member you have applied load until b it becomes 1.1 meter and upon removal of load it once again comes back to 1 meter at point c if you continuously go on increasing the load obviously the stress also increases the material has gone back to 1.2 meters upon removal of load you have the final dimensions as 1.1 meters so you can say that 0.1 meters is plastic deformation and 0.1 meter is elastic deformation so when when it comes back to its original shape and size actually without the application of load you are having a deformation of 0.1 meters so with lesser amount of stresses you are generating more amount of strain this is called as yielding because you have a permanent deformation being introduced into it so if you see the variation between c and d due to permanent deformation what happens there is a certain amount of deformation which is pre existent so you have a greater amount of strain as compared to what we had till b so greater amount of strain with a lesser amount of stress beyond d what happens the the plastic deformation is dominant over elastic deformation so you have more amount of plastic deformation in the material as compared to elastic deformation so the material goes on uh, increasing in length and having a permanent deformation until it reaches a point e which denotes the maximum tensile strength of the body maximum tensile strength means this is the maximum strength or this is the maximum stress the body can withstand without failure this is the maximum stress the body can withstand without failure beyond which the distance between e and f can be anything f is fracture point the there is a neck formation means a cross section bahut patla ho jayega there is a neck formation and due to this neck formation ultimately at point f the body breaks down into two parts so you have a complete fracture at point f again the distance between e and f depends upon the ductility of the material greater the ductility greater is the distance uh, between e and f okay so this is the stress strain diagram for ductile materials now let us come to uh, brittle materials if you see the stress strain diagram for brittle materials let us plot it So this is stress. This is strain. The so you have a you may have B or may not have B. This is E and this is F. So the specifications remain the same. You have A as hmm, proportional limit.
you have b as elastic limit you have e as ultimate tensile strength why we are saying this as tensile strength only because the loading that is done on ultimate utm machines to determine the stress strain diagrams are generally tensile in nature because when we talk about ductility to be drawn into wires you have to apply a tensile load okay so f is fracture point so now uh, let us also go back and understand what do you mean by tensile and tensile and compressive loads so if you talk about tensile and compressive loads uh, if due to loading the material elongates the material elongates means delta l is positive if due to loading the material elongates that means delta l is positive it is called as a tensile load and the resultant stresses arising out of it are called as tensile stresses so if the body shortens that means delta l comes out to be negative then it is called as a compressive load and the stresses are arising out of it are called as compressive stresses so this is the definition of tensile load and tensile stresses so if you go back to the stress strain diagram of brittle materials you can see that the material elongates to a certain extent and beyond which any time there can be failure so here there is no chance of yielding etc there may be a certain amount of plastic deformation but ultimately the material will break down into pieces there will uh, not be any process of yielding there will not be any substantial uh, plastic deformation observed the material for a, a time being behaves Uh, under the action of uh, hooke's law beyond which failure may occur any time so these are all examples of brittle materials and brittle materials means uh, examples like glass etc so this is the stress strain diagram as well as its explanation for ductile and brittle materials so the next thing is uh, we have seen that delta l is equal to pl by a so you have a situation this is a single equation so in the single equation there are five parameters so if this is a single equation if i give you if four are known you can find the fifth one so this is very clear that this is a single equation containing five parameters so you need to be given the four parameters so that the fifth one can be found out now if i have a bar like this and it has been subjected to a certain load so you can calculate the value of delta l as pl by ae if the diameter is given if dia is known dia and length are known so dia gives you the cross sectional area this gives you the length if <coughs> material is known uh, you have a value of e load applied is known so delta l can be calculated 
so this is a situation where you can calculate the change in length of this body now the next situation arises that if the bars are in series so let us say that uh, this is one bar and these are three bars which are been connected in series they have a length l1 they have a length l2 they have a length l3 and it is applied by the same load so delta l is given by delta l of body 1 plus delta l of body 2 plus delta l of body 3 so delta l of body 1 it will be acted upon by the same load so this is p l1 by if they have different areas this is a1 if they are made up of different material they are represented as three different materials similarly we have p l2 divided by a2 e2 and we have p l3 divided by a3 e3 so this is a situation where all these three members are joined together they have different lengths they have different areas also probably and they are made up of different materials so if they are made up of different materials you will have three different values so again this is a single equation you need to put down all the values and you can calculate the total change in length if the total change in length comes out to be negative it is termed as compressive loading and negative delta l means that there is a decrease in the overall dimensions of the body due to the applied load whereas a positive value of delta l indicates that there is an increase in the overall dimensions of the body so next comes extension of a tapered bar now extension of a tapered bar what we do is let us say that this is a tapered bar which has a dimension d1 diameter here d2 diameter here and the diameter decreases over a length l okay so what we are doing is Uh, from a distance here let us say x this is a uniformly tapered bar obviously you need to understand that this is a uniformly tapered bar so at a distance x from here let us say that we take an elemental section having a thickness or having a length dx okay so what we have done here is this is a tapered bar having a di diameter d1 at one end d2 at the other end and from the larger end we have taken a distance x and we have taken a, a small element of length dx okay so delta l the statement of delta l says that it is pl by ae so to calculate first length is known as dx is already given as dx we need to calculate the instantaneous area so the instantaneous area means we need to calculate the instantaneous diameter so instantaneous diameter dia at a distance x will be how much if it is d1 here it is d2 here then it will be d1 minus d1 minus d2 divided by l into x how did we arrive at this relationship this is a method of interpolation yahan pe d1 hai yahan d2 hai so har badhti duri ke sath diameter kam ho raha hai kyunki humne larger end se liya tha to kam ho raha hai to ye minus hai kis se kam ho raha hai d1 se kam ho raha hai to ye d1 minus ho gaya kitna kam ho jayega d1 minus d2 is the total decrease in length this total de sorry decrease in diameter this total decrease in diameter has taken place over a distance l so l distance mein agar total decrease in diameter d1 minus d2 by l hai to x distance pe iska diameter kitna hoga kitna decrease hoga d1 minus d2 divided by l into x itna decrease ho gaya so let d1 minus d2 by l be equal to k kyunki dekho ye constant hai aapko d1 pata hai d2 pata hai l pata hai to obviously k is a constant so instantaneous diameter d 
is given by d1 minus kx so instantaneous area is given by pi by 4 into d1 minus kx whole square so let us put down these values here you have delta l is equal to p dx divided by pi by 4 d1 minus kx whole square multiplied by e now the limits of integration are 0 to l the material extends from 0 to l if you integrate this you have 4 p l divided by pi e d1 d2 so if you integrate this let d1 minus kx be equal to t if you solve it you have 4 p l by pi e d1 d2 so this is the formula to calculate the extension of a tapered bar if the dimensions are from d1 to d2 so d1 bada ho ya d2 bada ho it makes no difference you can take it any way and determine the total change in length so the total change in length is given by 4 pl by pi e d1 d2